Hi guys, PJ here. Today we're working on a 2008 Citroen Crosser. This is a UK example of the vehicle and we're going to be fitting a dash cam into the front of it so that it goes on and off with the ignition key with no wires showing at all for that nice professional factory fit looking finish. Now before you follow this video guide, I just need to point out that by following it I am held no way liable or responsible for any injury to yourself or damage to your vehicle. So, first things first, what handy tools are needed? Ideally but not essential, we're looking at these few bits. A multimeter for testing the fuses in your fuse box. If you haven't got a multimeter, a test probe will do. So one of the little screwdrivers is a light bulb in the end where you touch it on a circuit and it illuminates. Either will do just fine. A pair of long nose pliers because the fuse box on these Citroens are recessed quite far and it's hard to pull the fuses out. So these are just, you know, to get in there, pinch them and pull them out. Quite handy. Electrical tape just for tidying up all your extra cabling because you're always left with quite a lot of it surplus and get quite a lot of cable with these cameras. And this is probably the most important part, a plastic leverage tool. Don't use a screwdriver to leave a plastic trim on your dashboard. You will definitely damage it. You'll leave little dints in it. It looks a right mess. So plastic leverage tool, you can buy these from Amazon, eBay. They're about a pound. No big deal. Very worthwhile having. Obviously, any plastic scraper will do if it's strong enough to be used as a leverage tool. The other thing that you could ideally do with when you're fitting a camera is a fitting kit like so. Fitting kits contain everything in them that you need to do the job. In the fitting kit you will get obviously the end that plugs into the camera there. This one's mini USB because it's an X-Base camera that's going in. Obviously yours may differ depending on brand which terminates in a negative and a positive. The negative can go to any chassis earth on the car so I normally mount this behind a dashboard mounting bolt which I'll show you shortly. And the positive plugs into a fuse spur, of which in this particular kit you get two, but there are quite a few variants on blade fuses. The Citroen that we've got here today uses a mini blade fuse, this sort of thing. So we don't need the larger one. The larger ones are either older cars, some Mercedes's and commercial vehicles, generally speaking. Won't be using that. What this is, this fuse spur, basically it doubles up the socket of a fuse in your fuse box. So you don't have to do any wiring as such, any soldering or anything like that. So it will come with, or should come with, a 2 or 3 amp fuse in the outside socket, like so. That's to run the camera. And then the, the fuse that you remove from the fuse box will sit next to it just here. Okay, so you plug them both together and then plug this in the slot where the fuse came from. Now you'll be using an accessory position fuse, so in other words, nothing critical like ECU, ABS, airbags, nothing like that, auxiliary socket for that particular one. The other thing quickly to point out, in most kits they come with a ferrite filter. This helps suppress interference, especially on DAB radios, with limited success. In my experience, a lot of cameras can cause interference with DAB radio. Okay, no real cure for that as of yet. Generally, these Citroen Crossers don't have DAB radio. They're sort of pre that era, so you should be just fine. But this wraps around the end of the power cable right near the plug. In other words, like this. So you open it up, it's on little hinges, and you wrap it basically through the centre, underneath, and then back through again and shut it. Like so. Next thing I normally do with your power cable is measure it up against the top of the window screen, pop yourself a couple of cable ties around it and snip them off. So I wrap them around the cable, snip the end off, and then what I generally do is cover them in electrical tape. The reason I do that is because they can have a sharp end on them when you've cut them, and being your headlining is made of like a cardboard fibre substance, you don't want it to rub through and make a mess. The reason I put these on is to beef the cable up, it's to stop it falling down in front of you when you hit a nice big pothole, it's just to beef it up. So you can now go ahead, push this up against your headlining, against the roof where the windscreen meets the roof. So if cable popped up, there's our camera right next to the interior mirror there. Just pop it up underneath the headlining. Like I say, you've got to be careful with the headlining. Don't grab it like a bull in a china shop because it is only a fibre substance. You can easily crease it. Tuck it up all the way along so that your cable just plugs in like so. And then when you get to this corner here, you're going to feed it behind the airbag behind here. Now, airbags 
you can pull them forward a little bit just to tuck the cable behind it's not a problem next up we're coming down to the side panel here and we're going to pop that off using our trim removal tool some of these can be tight some of them can be loose this particular one's quite loose there we go just pull the rubber trim away and you should be able to pop your tool underneath and just pop it off This reveals some nice 13mm bolts that you can use for an earthing point, so go ahead and take this bolt out. Don't worry, your dashboard won't fall out, it's holding with plenty more stuff. So we're going to pop our earth behind this bolt. Minor correction there, that's a 12mm bolt, not a 13 But either way, remove the bolt, you're good to go. So with bolt removed, what we've done is put a circle terminal on the end of it there so we can thread it through the bolt and then pop to washer behind that just so when we tighten it back up it doesn't crunch the earth connection that we're making go ahead and pop that back in and that'll be a nice solid earthing point once tightened up so there we go bolt back in tidied up the excess cabling so it can sit nicely out of the way the next thing we're going to do is deal with the power cable. Now your fuse box is located behind the glove box, down behind there. So we need to thread the cable, the power cable, through here and obviously pop the glove box lid down just like in your owner's manual, which can be done by pushing two tabs in, one each side. So what I'm going to do now is find an ignition switched accessory position fuse. Now you're going to use your multimeter and with your ignition off, yeah, off, zero volts, we're going to test to see which accessory fuses, referred to your owner's manual for accessory fuses, can be used for a power source. Now obviously what you're going to do is try it once. So if I go for air conditioning, for example, on this particular right-hand drive UK model, zero voltage, perfect. When we turn the ignition on, this fuse goes live, shows sort of 12 volts. That is a perfect candidate for our camera to be used as an ignition switched supply. Depending on where your car is built, what accessories it's got, what market it's shipped to, your fuse box layout may well differ, so obviously do test. We'll go ahead now and pull this fuse out, pop it in the fuse spur. There we go. Fuse out the fuse box and in the fuse spur. You can now go ahead, pop the hole, the middle, back in the fuse box like so obviously tidy your cabling up pull it through to the other side and electrical tape it up or cable tie it up right now it's time to give your camera a quick test so there we go there's ignition off turning the ignition on now give it a second and there we go powers up lovely just the job turn the ignition back off again and the camera goes off Perfect. With the cabling all tidied up behind this end panel, you simply pop it back on, shove your rubber trim back on all the way down. There we go. Pop your glove box back up. Watch your damper there on the side that hooks it underneath. A lot of these dampers with age, just so you know, break. There's a plastic lug on the left hand side here. If yours are snapped off, there's not a lot you can do about it. You just got to sort of fold it out of the way. But if not, like I say, just pop it back on, back behind it, and it's out of the way and done. Shut your glove box, and that is it. That is how you fit a dash cam on a Citroen Crosser. Any questions, pop them in the comments below, and thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now.